Now let's look at an application of lists in which we'll simulate a perfect shuffle. So I once saw an amateur magician explaining a card trick. And the card trick was that he would ask an audience member what their name was, making the assumption that their name had either four or five letters, which is very common for American names. And then when the person would give him their name, he would make sure that the person ultimately turned over the fifth card in the deck, and that card would be some card they had already chosen. So he explained to us that the way he performed the trick is he would perform eight perfect shuffles on the deck of 52 cards. And by doing so, you return the deck of cards to its original position. So he would take the card that the user had given him, sneak it into the fifth position in the deck, and then start performing these shuffles. And to the audience members, it looks like he's really shuffling it, so there must be a lot of randomness to it. But in reality, he's just returning it back to the original ordering. So what is a perfect shuffle? Well, normally when you divide, or when you're shuffling a deck of cards, you divide it into two stacks, and you'd like for those to be somewhat even, and then you merge the two stacks or interleave the cards by trying to take one card from each stack as you merge them together. To perform a perfect shuffle, that's what you're doing, but you're doing it with more exactness. So you really do divide the card or the deck of 52 cards into two decks of 26 cards. And then when you merge them, you do it in such a way that you make sure you only get one card from every other deck. So when you think about how you've shuffled cards before, when other people do it, we're usually not that exact. So what may happen is we may have a card from this stack and then maybe two from this stack and then maybe three from this stack and one here and one here and another two here or whatever. So this isn't a perfect shuffle. With the perfect shuffle, you want to be completely even and the two stacks start with the same number of cards. And so for this to work, you have a standard 52 card deck and then you perform eight perfect shuffles. So I've always wondered, was this really true? And I thought, I wonder how you can show that. So I decided to write a program to do it. So we start off with thinking, well, how do I represent the deck of cards? Well, note that when I talk about how this works, at no time do I make any claims that the ace of spades will be on top, or the third card from the bottom will be the king of diamonds or anything like that. I'm simply saying that whatever uh, the original 52 cards, uh, whatever the original ordering of those 52 cards is, after eight perfect shuffles, we'll get that same ordering. We don't care about the positions of any particular card. So I'll start off here with a standard 52 card deck. So if I think about it, what I want to do is I'm going to represent the 52 cards using a list. Where well, this will have one, two, da da dot, the numbers down to 52. So I'm gonna draw it like this. One, two, three, da da dot, up to card 52. Then we want to split it, or divide it, however you want to think about it, into two subsets, right? And so what I'm gonna call left will be cards one, two, dot 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 26 and then right will be the other half 27 28 dot 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 52 all right so I'll split it and then when we merge it we will get one from every other deck or subset so if I start on the left I'm gonna have one then we have 27, then 2, then 28, dot, 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 up to 26. That's the last one on this side. And 52 is the last one on this side. And then I would take this stack, divide it into two parts. So the left one would be 1, 27, 2, 28, and so forth. And then merge them and so forth. So I'm doing this thinking, what's the underlying process I just did? Creating the list is fairly easy. I just need a list that has the numbers 1 through 52 or whatever numbers I want to give them. It doesn't matter, but that's easy to check. 
But in terms of the underlying indices, if I call the original stack, or whatever this is called, cards, and this now is cards, because I don't need to keep the original after printing it. I'm just gonna, when I merge them, put it back into the same space in memory, although technically in Python, it really would be a separate object with the same name. So I'm gonna merge them back together. So this was cards, which is a list. And now when I merge them, or before to do this part, excuse me, when we do this part, what do we have? Well, I'm going to have left at index zero is equal cards at index zero. Left at index one is equal cards at index one, dot, dot, dot. Left at index 25, right? Because we start at index zero when we're talking about lists, not the value that's there. So go cards 25 and do the right hand side is something similar. So write zero SQL cards 26. Work my way down. Write 25 is equal cards 51. Because that's the last value that has value 52. So this is easy enough, have a loop or something that goes from zero to 25 and assigns left sub i is equal to cards sub i. And for right, we start at zero and go down 25. So this would be right sub i is equal to cards what? Well, when this is zero, there's a functional relationship here. And what is it? I can get that 26 is equal to this index, 0, plus 26. And the next one, for right down here, right 1 is equal to cards, 27. So 27 is equal to this index, 1, plus 26. And then 28 will be equal to 1, plus 26. And ultimately, we get down here, dot, 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 that... Uh, 51 here is equal to 25. Sorry, this should be 2 plus 26. So I can see what I can do is I can take the index for right and add 26 to it to get the index for cards. So right i is equal to cards i plus 26. This is how I do the initial assignment of the two subarrays. So what about when I'm merging? Let's move this over. So when trying to merge back together for this part, what's happening? Well, we can see now I'm going to have cards. Zero is equal, because we're down here. Left zero. Cards one is equal to right zero. Right, where those have the same index. So that's these two right here, because this was right zero, which is 27, right? And then we have cards two and cards three are equal to left one and right one. So let's have the same index, so forth. So over here, cards is incremented by one each time. And this obviously would make it all the way down to index 51. But these have to make it down to index 25 because there's only 26 positions in each of these. So I really need two different variables. So over here, I'm going to have a K counter that increments by 1 plus equal 1. And this, I need some kind of counter. So how can I do it as part of the same loop? Well, if I have this, if I say i is equal to zero to start with, while i is less than 52 for the cards, and increment it in steps of two, I can go zero, two, 
this would be four, then I'd have six, because I have these subsets here, all these parts. All right. So what I get is on each iteration of the loop, I'll have cards I is equal to left K and cards I plus one we equal to be right K. And then K increments by one each time. Well, I increments by two, because now at this point, if I was zero, this would be zero plus one is one, then I will have cards two is equal to left one, and then cards four, and so forth. So this is the very explicit way to do it. So what I've actually done is two implementations. One implements it basically doing what I showed you here, which not only explains what really has to happen behind the scenes in some form, but in some programming languages that don't have the same capabilities as Python, you may have to explicitly do it this way anyway. But then in my second version, we'll look at how to do it in Python such that I make use of Python's language features that make certain things easier. So let's look at that. So here's going to be version one. So down at the bottom, I start with an empty list for cards, and I want to initialize the values. So for i in range from 0 to 52, minus 1, right, because we'll never actually make it to 52 because of the range function, how it works, I'm going to append to this list i plus 1. So I add 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 52. Then I'm going to print whatever the original set of cards is, and then I'm going to run this loop eight times calling the shuffle function. And after each shuffling, I want to print what the status of the cards list is. That is, what does it look like? In fact, let's go ahead and run it just to see. So here's the original deck, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 52. And now, think back what I had on my piece of paper, right here, one, 27, two, 28, all the way up. So after one shuffle, we had 1, 27, 2, 28, dot, 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 up to 26, 2. So it really is interleaving them. And now it looks worse. And here it looks worse. But when we get down here to shuffle number 8, it's back in order. 1, 2, 3, up to 52. So it does work. So let's see how the shuffle function works. So think about the logic that I just showed you. So I'll start with an empty list for left, an empty list for right. And then I go through a loop, doing similar to what I did right here, where I'm going to append either, uh, well, in both cases, I append some value from C, which is my cards list. So I'm going to have the first value in left be C sub 0, the second value be C sub 1, and so forth. But then right, the first value will be C sub 26, followed by C sub 27, and so forth. Just like what I said on my piece of paper right here. I did this right here. And now I'm gonna have this loop to merge the two sides. So if we look at, I'm gonna put some comments in here. This is split cards into two subsets. Large subsets back into cards. All right. So what happens here? I start i and k both at zero, and while i is less than 52, I say that c sub i is equal to left sub i k, excuse me, and c sub i plus one is equal to right sub k. But then I increment i by two and increment k by one, just like I showed you right here. So card zero is left zero, cards one is right zero. But that's achieved by doing this. So this right here is one of these. Because here's the loop, how it runs. Starts at zero, while less than 52 in steps of two. 
with k incrementing by one on each iteration. So one iteration, I will increment by two on each iteration, but here's how I get the two adjacent values, zero and one, two and three, four and five, and so forth. So that's what I do here, and as we can see, it works. So as I stated a moment ago, this matches my design, and this is how I actually think about the problem. And then ultimately behind the scenes, something like this has to happen anyway, regardless of what language features you use. But ultimately I have to split the deck into two subsets and then merge the pieces, interleaving things from the two sides. Left, right, left, right, left, right. All right? Let's see how we can do it Python uh, such that it's actually easier. So if you haven't seen my list video, you might want to look at that first because this is going to make use of some features from there. So let's look at this version. Let's run it to see if it actually works. And we'll check. So Perfect Shuffle 2 starts by 1 through 52, then 127, 228 up to 262. So it is splitting them. And then 1, 2, 3, up to 52. All right. So we start off, I'm going to use a list comprehension to produce cards. So remember what this basically says. For n in range of 1 to 53, I'm going to append this value to this list. That's what this is doing. And then these lines are identical to what they were before. So the function up here changed. So left, to get that, I'm going to slice starting at the beginning of C up to index 25 because we never actually make it to 26 and I let it default to a step size of 1 and then for right I'm going to start at index 26 and go to the end in steps of 1. What about this right here? Let's look at briefly at some code and understand how I'm doing the merging. So let's say we have this A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 a and then we'll have b is equal to um, 11 we'll make this 13 15 and c is equal to uh, 12 14 16 Let's look at these briefly before we merge them. So those are what we expect it to be. And so let's say I want to replace the values. I want to replace 1, 3, and 5 with these three values. And 2, 4, and 6 with these three values. So when I slice, I can certainly do it on the right-hand side of the equality, but it turns out I can do it on the left side. The thing you have to be careful of is to make sure that the number of values you're trying to replace in each case are the same. So I'm going to have A starting at index 0 because I'm going to replace the 1 here with 11. So index 0 all the way to the end, so I'll leave it blank, and step sizes of 2 will be equal to all of B. So this says starting at the beginning of B to the end of B, and I'm going to replace those values. Let's see. So let's print A. Just see what happens. Look, 1, 3, and 5 are replaced by 11, 13, and 15, just like I wanted. And the 2, the 4, and the 6 are still there. So now I do this. Let's now start at index 1 till the end in step size of 2. And you see. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I use slicing here, and technically use slicing over here, and so I replace every other value of A by one of the values of B. And like I said, you have to be careful that they're equal number of terms, because if I'd had, say, this, actually, I may make a liar out of me. Oh, see, attempt to assign sequence size three to extend the slice. The problem is, 
when I'm doing this right here for A, I go index 0, 1, index 2, 3, index 4, 5, index 6, but there's not a fourth number in B. So if I'd actually had this, then I could have done it because I'm replacing four values in A with four values in B and three values in A with three values in C. That's a thing you have to just be careful of. So let's go back now and look at how I used it here. So for C, I want to use every other value, or that is, excuse me, I want every other value starting at index zero of C to replace by value of left, and then start at index one in C, replace every other value in C with the corresponding value from right, just like what I did right here. And this is the more Pythonic version. So it's more in line with the Python philosophy and makes more use of Python features versus this version. Conceptually, something like this has to happen. Not necessarily in this order or whatever, but something has to say take C sub zero and replace it left of zero and C sub two or left sub one, just like I did here. That has to happen in some form, but the syntax of Python allows you to do that in the way that I wrote it here as opposed to doing it here. Okay? So hopefully now you can better appreciate lists as well as you learn something cool about magic tricks. And then uh, you need to remember this too, because even if you do things in the Pythonic version, this type of logic uh, not only is useful to understand the problem, but some programming languages will basically require that you do something similar to this. All right? If you find videos like this helpful, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button to let me know that you're enjoying it and I should continue making videos.